Jag har spenderat över tio år fram och tillbaka till Sydafrika. Och det finns en plats som jag återkommande fått berättat för mig. En plats för afrikaners av afrikaners. Det är med andra orden stad där bara vita bor. It was a decision I made um, for my kids to, to grow up in an environment that uh, I used to know when I grew up on a farm. And uh, the situation in South Africa now is, uh, is not what I like uh, for my kids to, uh, to grow up in. So that is why I made the choice to come here. Oranias president is Karel Boshoff. Han är barnbarn till Sydafrikas förre president Henrik Förvårt. Förvårt brukar hänvisa som arkitekten till apartheidsystemet. Yes, Verania was established as an Afrikaner haven as you as you rightly said in 1991. By that time it was already obvious to our leadership that minority government in South Africa was unsustainable. Um, and we as conservative Afrikaners, contrary to what some people might uh, e- expect, was not trying to continue minority government, but we were neither on the other hand willing to give up the determination over our own affairs um, to a majority government that uh, excluded or would exclude uh, us and our interests. So. Um, already for for some uh, years close to a decade before that we have been discussing this concept of establishing a region a part of south africa in which the afrikaners could be the dominant uh, population looking after themselves so um, it's not about ruling over blacks absolutely not it it is the exact opposite of ruling over over black people or whoever um it is it's a a matter of ruling over ourselves looking after ourselves uh, our own uh, material interests education safety um all those kinds of things that really matter to people in their daily lives and um we started with zero uh, and we've grown over the past uh, what's it 20 27 years we've grown to a population of 1500 people approximately Uh, you, you mentioned uh, Gauteng and uh, me and my crew just arrived from there and when we're mm. driving around there, because you can't walk around in those areas, you see all these houses with uh, electrical fences and barbed wire, but he- here in Oranje you can actually walk around and you don't even have a fence around the, the houses. Yeah, yeah, not, not around the town as well. Yeah. Um, that that's the sort of demographic side of 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 safety uh, um section that refers to self determination there's a section in the south african constitution that says the right to the self determination of of the whole south africa or the south african nation does not exclude the right of a cultural community like wirania to exercise self determination uh, in its uh, own right so it's a uh in the grasp of possibility to achieve some kind of autonomous self determination it 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 could uh, definitely and we work on on uh, on on that premise that it could be taken much further than we have taken it already yeah. um as long as it is supported by the people affected by it of course it's not something that could be um uh, forced down on people who don't want it or are not interested but uh, uh, as long as it is something that people do and and build out for themselves um uh, it it has been recognized and we uh, trust that we will uh, um uh, keep up the kind of 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 relationship and power balance to to have it uh, recognized in future as well under mina vistelser här i sydafrika har jag fått en uppfattning av orania som till stor del baseras på andras uppfattning om staden. 
En form av visklek har format min förutfattade bild av staden som ett traditionellt farmarsamhälle där det hålls hårt på den afrikantiska kulturen. Ett samhälle som domineras av den gamla skolan. Äldre bönder som vill leva som de alltid har levt. En samling bakåtsträvare för att uttrycka det milt. Jag blev därför glatt överraskad när jag kom fram till Orania och fick se ett litet samhälle som skjuter av liv. Där genomsnittsåldern är strax över 30 och som domineras av barnfamiljer. Um, we are a bit different from the traditional school model in South Africa. Um, we, we try to teach children to take responsibility for their own work um, by um, certain measures that, that we use in, in our system, in the method that we teach. So they don't have a certain time for a certain subject, they get a work schedule for each subject for the rest of the term and they plan how they are going to do that work. So we control and we assist and every week we, we go through the work, are they where they should be, did they do what they should do. If they are a bit behind then we have certain measures they have to stay longer at school for the next week. If they work ahead of, of the schedule, they can take certain days off or go home earlier. So it's all measures to, to motivate them to, uh, to do their work on their own. And we've had quite a success with this method in the last 27 years because we have the record that not once in, in that time uh, a learner who went to university or college um, did not complete the first year. And because you hear from universities quite often in South Africa that they lose students in the first year because it's just too much for them. Yeah. But because we already teach them, it, it's, it only depends on yourself. Um, if your work is done, you, you get the rewards. If your work is not done, you have to put in extra time. So you've got a pretty good track record. Yes, I think so. Okay, amazing. Yeah. All right, mm. should we go and uh, meet can, one of the classes? Yeah, we can look into the classroom. För att husera Oranias alla barn krävs två skolor. De två skolorna påvisar också en social kontrast där det är konservativa och innovativa möts. En skola med uniformskrav och med en strikt traditionell struktur där ordning och reda är ledorden. Och en skola som utmanar det konservativa med en undervisning som sker mer på elevernas behov till vad de vill studera under lektionstiden. Snarare än att det är schemat som bestämmer över lektionen. Det är delvis överraskande att presidentens son går på den liberala skolan med den tidigare bilden som man har fått berättat för sig om Orania. Men ser man Karl Bosov som en innovatör och Orania som en kreativ lösning på ett högst påtagligt problem så är det faktiskt inte så överraskande att sonen går på vad som en del konservativa skulle formuleras som en flumskola. Däremot så går vicepresidentens Jakus barn på den konservativa skolan. The Urania movement we are tasked to promote the idea behind Urania. We've been doing that for the last 30 years since uh, we were created as an organization in March 1988 to have this idea of Afrikaner self-determination in the North Western Cape to promote that. So that's what we're busy with every day, you know, is to try and tell people about Urania, get people involved in Urania and get people to not only move here but, but also invest in, in, in this idea of, Afri of Urania as, as a starting point for Afrikaner self-determination in, in this part of the country. Like we've done many times in the past here in South Africa. So our symbol on our flag is a young man who rolls up his sleeves and says, I'm going to do the job myself. I'm not going to ask someone else to do it. I'm not going to wait for someone else to do it. We say in Urania that Afrikaners lost their freedom. They lost their control over their own destiny. 
for one reason, because of their dependence on, on other labor, on labor from other people. We're not going to make that mistake ever again. So our symbol is we will do it ourselves now. Um, and that is why it's very important for us to even put that on our flag, to have that was one of our most important symbols in Urania. So I believe within the next few years that Urania will become uh, a place where 20, 30, maybe 40,000 Afrikaners will live and work um, and have a very good life, you know. And we will probably see a lot of expansion of our land uh, uh, around Urania. That will be necessary. Um, and we will see the development of further institutions on the way to greater self-determination, you know, where we are still lacking the institutions that can give us full self-determination. I think we will, we will increase our capability of developing those institutions. Um, and as we um, need a lot of, of people in Urania to do the work, there's, there's a lot of jobs available, we also welcome, we also welcome people in need. Um, and, and we use that as an opportunity to resettle um, many Afrikaners, young Afrikaner families, and, and of those people, many are young people, people in their 20s who came out of school and who just can't find jobs, and we settle them here. So the perceptions sometimes are that Urania is like a retirement village for Afrikaners, and that's not the case at all. Um, we see that the average age of people in Urania are just over 30. Um, and more and more young people in their 20s move to our town. We have in our two schools uh, more than 300 uh, um, children. So a lot of um, um, school children, a lot of young people in their 20s um, who do basic uh, work in Urania, and they will be the future of, of this town. And uh, what's the procedure to becoming a citizen? Well, if someone wants to move to Urania, they need to get um, a citizen right, you know. You need to apply for that. There's an, an administrative process um, and where you need to, in the first place, commit yourself to certain ideals, you know. You need to commit yourself to the Afrikaner culture, the Afrikaans language, um, the way of life in Urania. En av huvudanledningarna till att människor söker sig till Urania är på grund av den skyhöga brottsligheten i Sydafrika. Var och en åker i Johannesburg eller Pretoria så omges husen av murar med taggtråd och elektriska stängsel. Ens hem är ens fängelse. I Orania är barnen ute och leker fritt på gatorna. Vilket är helt otänkbart i många andra delar av Sydafrika. You guys like living here in Orania? Yeah, it's very safe. Yeah. Det är framtidshopp till Orania och vilket är anledningen till att allt fler söker sig till vad som fungerar. Varje månad hålls informationsmöten för nya potentiella medborgare till den lilla staden. Yes, we had an interview yesterday where they, they just um, ask you basic questions about, about why you want to come to Urania, um, what your interests are. Um, they do a bit of a background check, um, um, you know, to, to, to check your, your, your reasons. Um, so we had our interview yesterday and today is, is just so that you can get an, an idea of what the history is like of the town. Um, um, for, for me growing up, um, part of our school um, curriculum, they don't teach you about Afrikaans history. It's, it's not part of our curriculum at all anymore. Um, so they, they just here yeah, give you a bit of a background again about your Afrikaans history, um, about how the town was, was um, set up and, and so yeah, it's just a bit of, about a bit of background. So uh, when will you actually move here? Uh, well, we, we've only bought a, a, a piece of land now, so we probably build um, and then take it, take it from there and see. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a medium term plan um, yeah. and not something that we see maybe in the next year or two, but maybe in the next 10 years we, we do plan on, on maybe moving here. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. And good luck. Thanks so much. Well, we pay taxes to this South African government, as same as any place, but we don't get any services from them. Um, we buy our electricity from ESCOM, which is the provider, um, which doesn't get sponsored by, by our taxes. The, the infrastructure, the roads, the um, sewage system, everything we do, we do self, uh, we, we do it ourselves. So um, we don't get anything from the, from the South African government in that respect. What we do realize is that we're in the middle of, of South Africa and in, in Africa. And to be a, an effective uh, community anywhere in the world, you need good neighbors. Okay. 
but self-sufficient yes we create our own infrastructure um, we f are focusing on on sun power solar power at this stage to try and get off the grid as, as much as possible but it's a process i mean you, you can't just turn off the switch and then everything is sorted so we're building towards more self-sufficient um, and i think the, lo the the more time we have the more we can actually get to that route the fact is it's, it's not a very uh, um, popular idea at this stage but we still believe that that um, self-sufficient communities is the way forward not just for South Africa for the rest of the world as well. Samhällsutvecklingen i Sydafrika är oroväckande. Den vita minoriteten kan inte påverka det politiska med hjälp av röstsedeln. Några har därför valt att bygga sin egen trygghet här i Orania i separation utanför det havererade sociala skyddsnätet. De vill leva med sina egna och inte på bekostnad av någon annan. De vill leva i fred i ett samhälle som fungerar. <skratt>